guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Happy to be here. Okay, awesome. I want you to hear that. Uh, we just got back, uh, my husband and I, we just got back recently, actually last night from um, uh, Morelia, Mexico. And it was just a time of, you know, you, you go to, you go and you go do something they're going to ask you to do. And then when you get there, not only were the people blessed, but I really, I know that we counted an honor and a privilege to be there. Uh, God changed the plans. You know, we order, we're the one who we plan and he orders our steps, right? So we got there and the entire church was renovated in three days. And so they saw rest, what was it? Inside out. So they tasted resurrection power. What, what is God so good and able to do in three days? I mean, I, was thought, I thought I was dying, but I was actually living because I made it to the third day. But it was amazing. It's good to be back. And today we actually start a new series that I will start for Wednesday nights. It's Monsters, Inc. Do you like the title? When you were a kid, let me ask you something. When you were a kid, uh, did your parents, some of the parents do it, some other don't do it. But did your parents tell you so you can go to bed or you be quiet, right? They put you in bed and, they, and then you say, Mom, bring me water. And then we do that. And then and they tell you, if you don't go to sleep, you know, the boogeyman is going to come. Right? Or whatever. You, you, I didn't grow up with the boogeyman. I grew up with uh, the leprechaun or other things, you know. Uh, I was terrified. Uh, about the, I always say the hairy hand because it's in Spanish, but that's the best translation. They said that the mano peluda is going to take you. I grew up and I realized that it was my own hand because I'm very hairy. So I was traumatized by this hand that would come out at night. And I thought that it was going to grab me. And uh, but as I grew up, I realized that monsters are not really under your bed. When you... Uh, as you get older, you realize that you allow those monsters, those, the fear, the doubt. You realize that those monsters have actually crawled out of, under the bed, and now they reside in your head. And I wanted to call it Monsters, Inc., because I feel that sometimes uh, we allow every thought, every thought that flies by, I, I, I am a catcher. I realized that I'm so good at catching thoughts. God didn't say catch every thought that passes over your head. <clears throat> he says that we are to conquer every thought. And um, I'm going to give you today, it's going to be my, my, my foundation. And uh, I know I didn't give this to the media, but, you know, this is a perfect, a perfect uh, verse to start with. And it's Romans 12 too. And it says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. He says, do not be conformed or do not conform to the pattern. Do you know that the world has a pattern? Do you know that you yourself, we all have patterns? And usually those patterns come when we were little. We, we created patterns. But God is so amazing. He's, he thought of us. He created us in the, his image, in his likeness. So therefore, we're able to renew our thoughts. We're able to discard the old way of thinking. And we're able to actually grab the word of God and, you know, apply it into our lives. And one of the things that... The, what, what I just read, it didn't say, you know, and you be transformed by attending church, right? Because you could be attending church three years, five years, but that doesn't mean that your mind is renewed. You can have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and the moment that we accept Jesus, our spirit becomes alive. But then there's the process of becoming like Jesus. It's transforming the way that we uh, see life, the way that we perceive things, the way that we think. And it's really hard to get a new thought. It's really hard to get rid of the old patterns. That's why people always say, do your 21 day, right? 21 detox. Uh, we do 21 days. I, I didn't even finish my 30 days detox. And that was physical. But you can also do a 21 day, so 31 detox for your, for your thoughts. 
And the reality is that the way that God created us is because in 21 days, if we choose today to get one thought, just one thought, and we are going to chew on that thought, but not just chew it, not just say it, not just confess it. Because many times we say, you know, today I'm going to believe that I am able because we have insecurities, right? So you can say this morning, you can wake up and you said, I am able. And then the Lord is going to give you opportunity during, during the day to see if you can actually are able and practice and experience what you just spoke in the morning. So I can say, I am able. I am able. And then someone asked me, you know, I need you to share for five minutes, but I don't feel prepared. And then I'm going to say, no. You know what? No. So without knowing, I just repeated. I didn't do anything, although I said it. And I'm trying to change my actions and my behavior. And many times we are trying to change what we say. We are trying to change our behavior. But actually, it's a problem that is not a, a, a software problem. It's a hard drive problem. So many times I'm trying to buy new software. You know, I'm going to get new words, new confessions. I'm going to read this differently. But the problem is not that. The problem is that the hard drive, my heart, it's in need of renewal. And um, I want to draw something because, you know, since my husband was going to be sitting here, I was like, I wanted to impress you guys. <laughs> because you got, who comes on Sunday? You know, he uses all these props. I'm like, I have never actually used this. So I'm like, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to, I got a new thought, right? And I said, I'm going to do it. And so I can look smart. I'm going to wear my glasses. <laughs> Teasing. I need them. Right. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. Okay. <laughs> Let me explain it. You see, never play, what is it, picture? What is it? Pictionary with me because you're not going to get it. <laughs> I can do charades. Okay. This is an egg. If you crack it, this is your brain on drugs. No, no, that, that's not. <laughs> I just wanted to start that way to see like, wow, deep. That's not what I want to say. <laughs> Disregard. Remember when we used to watch it on TV? Like, this is your brain. And they cracked it. It was fine. Don't do drugs, right? That was just a freebie for you. This is what I really wanted to do. Okay, I don't know how to do my brain, but I'm going to do like, this is my brain. And I'm going to do it actually in the shape of a heart. Right? This is my brain. And there is three parts of our brain, of our mind. See, we always say the battle is in what? We're so good at saying that. I always say, Virginia, the battle's in the mind. The battle's in the mind. That's not changing my life. I'm just saying it because I heard it. And it's information, but unless I apply it, then it becomes an experience, right? So I wrote it down. So the first part here, this is, our, this is what's on our top, right? It's, these are our experiences that we have in childhood, in your life, right? This is where we have our patterns. You're like, I don't have a pattern. Oh, yes, you do. This is where we have our mechanisms. I hope I, right? This is the first one, right? A lot of things that happen on the top without knowing, this is, this is what we do on auto. I'm going to put it, uh, should we say auto? Yeah, you just... You're just going with the flow, right? Autopilot. Think about it. You got on your car. You were praying to God. You even got on your Bible, right? And you started so good and you felt great. You even felt like wings came out of your back, you know. As women, we love halos, you know, with tiara. Even, you know, you have all these things on, on Pinterest that said, fix your tiara. And you're fixing yourself and you're like fixing something that's not there, right? And you feel like you're overcoming, right? And then you get on your car. 
and then there's a lot of traffic and it just happens that you're late right because why because you were spending time with God you know you took your time you woke up late but you said God you're first so your work is later right so now you're stuck and you're you're, you're now you're like going 100 miles per hour right and all of a sudden someone cuts you off and then the green monster comes out and it's not Hulk do you know how many people have flipped me off while me driving that 405 demon? <laughs> Literally flipped me off. And you know how many times I wanted to return the favor? <laughs> like literally, I wanted to return the favor and instead of giving the, 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 you know, the other finger, you just like peace, you know? Of course, I never did it, but I never did peace because I'm like, no, you don't even deserve it. You don't even deserve my second finger. But we do things, and those are our patterns. Those are our patterns without you knowing, and then you address yourself, like, praise God, I'm good. And then, and then let's see, I'm just showing you a, a, a typical normal day, right? That doesn't happen to you, of course, because you're higher than me. Then you go to work, and now, you know, you're, you probably already have a pattern of being late, I and your boss ask you, why are you late? And then you're like, oh, you know, and because you work for a Christian company, right? You're like, I was praying for the company. <laughs> I was praying for the company. I got up this morning. I claim heaven. Today the sales are going to be awesome. Can you give me this report? Did you do what I told you to do? No, I didn't do it, but let me pray about that. <laughs> And we have patterns without knowing. And then, and then we're expecting to be promoted. We're expecting to walk in the goodness of God. We're expecting to taste and see the goodness of God. But we can because we, we don't, without knowing, we're, we are so lost in this place. But see, in order to renew our mind, this is where we get to renew our mind. I'm going to call it free uh, space, free will, choice, right? I said, do not be conformed, right? Do not be conformed or do not conform yourself to the patterns, whatever patterns I used to have. Now, the only way that I can renew those patterns is for me to administer to myself the word of God. For me to myself to chew on the word of God, to me, for me to myself to practice the word of God. So this is where we get to choose, right? And here, this is the bottom of your heart, right? This is supposed to be your heart and your mind. So here is your, let's say your dreams, your purpose, your aspirations. What else can we say? Something good that God gives us. Your passion. Your drive. Have a good student today. Your drive. <laughs> what else? Your what? Your drive, right? So here it is. So God is, we get in the word of God. We get in the word of God and then... The Bible says that we are his masterpiece, right? So now we got a purpose. I have a new dream. You know what? I am. You say, I am. You got a new thought that morning. And you say, you know what? I am valiant. Right? I am valiant. And this thought is trying to get here because this is what God gives you. But you have to give it birth, right? And it comes to this place. So because God is always going to elevate our thinking. Always. So it comes to this place, but then the autopilot, your pattern comes, and there's a clash, and it says, Psh, you always afraid. You always afraid. Didn't they call you scary cat? Scary kitty better, right? It sounds better. And so now God told you that morning, you are valiant. You're able to do all things to Christ 
who strengthens me. And the moment you decide to believe and elevate my thinking, you know what? I'm going to believe that. I'm going to believe that, yes, I am able to elevate my thought process. I am able to disarm, right? And this is just my, uh, we're going laying down the foundation, right? And we're going to go into next week into like, we are supposed to, to demolish every thought, right? We, we, we speak about it, everything. But then here it comes to this place. And this is the place where you get to choose. You get to choose that I either going to believe that I'm valiant. And if I believe that I'm valiant, then it has to take an experience for you to know that you're valiant. You need to practice what you just said. I am valiant. I am a conqueror. I am the head and not the tail. And how is it that I always stink because I feel like I am the butt? Right? Life can stink. And then many times we think, how many, many times I have thought, you know what, God didn't even hear me. God didn't even hear me. And it's not that he's not downloading and he's giving me, he's giving me vision. He's giving me purpose when I come to church or I listen to a message or I, or I read the Bible. Then I hear, you know, Virginia, you are and you are able to overcome. And you overcome by what do we overcome? The, he already gave us an answer. He says you overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of what? So we like to use, I love, when I'm going through something, I plead the blood of the lamb. Plead the blood of Jesus. Right? Two. And what? The word of my Test testimony. I want a testimony, but I don't want to go through the test. Right? I want God to upgrade me. I want to go through a different level. But I just want, I just want to, I don't want to take any test. I want God to just do it for me because I am a child of God. God needs to fulfill his promises because I am a new creation. And that's where we get stuck. Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as he thinks in his heart or her heart, so is he. And I'm going to read the whole verse. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The Passion Translation reads it this way. For as he thinks within who? himself so is he he will gradually say go ahead and eat all you want but in his heart he resents the fact that he has to pay for your meal you know what I love to read because it, this is, brings it the, the passion translation brings it more in the times that we're living right sometimes we say and he looks because we're, we're trying to be kind. Like if you were known to be a, a bully or if you were known to be like somebody with a lot of anger, right? So now we're trying to change our behavior. So because I want to address my behavior, my behavior is that I tend to be rude, right? So let's just say that's not me because I don't have the problem. Let's just say somebody else has that problem. And then he says, you know what, come, I'm going to take you out to eat. But inside you're like, you know, they never pay the bill. But you know, I need to look good because I am a child of God. So you say, eat whatever, it's all me. But grudgingly inside, you're not a generous person. You're pretending to be one. You want to change. But what you are doing is you're just addressing the outward appearance. And what I realize is that we go from, remember the movie Inside Out? It was a kid's movie, right? That's why I didn't want to call it Inside Out because that was good. It, it, they ha she had an emotion. She had the free will. She had all these things. And I'm not talking about that kind of Inside Out. I'm talking that inside that shouldn't be inside. The inward part that shouldn't be in there. It's those thoughts that will come and will rob you out of the purposes that God has for us. It's those thoughts that actually keep us from receiving, from entering the promise of God because we go back to Egypt. 
How many times have you gotten back to your old patterns in what you say, what you think? And you know that everything, if you think about it, look around, look around the room. And if you think about this board, somebody, this board wasn't just came out of nothing. This board was a thought. Someone thought about a board. Someone thought about the lights. It was a thought first. Everything that God created originates in a thought. Everything. And so tonight we're going to address those little pesky thoughts. And it's okay if they fly here. It's okay if they pass by here. But does it mean I have to catch them? It doesn't mean I have to make a nest for them. Because I did a study, and this is what the research says. It says, first of all, this is what the research says. It says, it has been known that about 80 and 90% of what you think today will be pretty much the same as what you thought yesterday. So let me ask you today, how do you feel today? Do a checkup. How do I feel today? Do I feel like I am overcoming? Do I feel like I'm in the same place? Do I feel like I'm stuck and I'm not moving? Okay, then if you feel like, and if you feel great, then awesome. If you feel happy and you're satisfied, then good. Continue to do that. If not, you go back and you say, okay, let me see. What is it? What thoughts did I have yesterday? What did, what did I think about my personal situation? What did I think about my health? What did I think about my family? What is it that what I was thinking yesterday that today I'm just, I'm just harvesting whatever I have sown yesterday? But faith is for today. I cannot say, you know what, tomorrow I'll start eating healthier. Because tomorrow will become your today, and then when today gets there, you're still living from yesterday. You see, it, it, it's, it's tricky. But God is saying, I want you to choose to live for me today. Because today, I am able to make changes. Today, if our thoughts come, we are supposed to um, question every thought. We are supposed to, we are one th thought away, I believe, from our, from, from our promised land. We are one thought away from our purpose. We are one thought away from our destiny. Or we can be one thought away from our destruction. We can be one thought away from our demise. We can be one thought away from us just falling apart. And if you continue to do research, it says that a good marriage starts with one good thought. A good family started with a good thought. A bad family started with a bad thought. A bad marriage started with a bad thought. An affair doesn't start just because it, start, it started with a thought. Everything starts with a thought. So many times I think we just clean our mouth, right? We, we clean the artwork. We clean uh, how we're going to present ourselves. We clean what we're going to say, but we don't go and go where we need to go. And the Bible admonished us, actually it admonished all of us to guard our heart. Proverbs 4.23 says this. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Another translation says, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. I don't know what shape you're in tonight. I don't know if you're in good shape, in okay shape, in excellent shape, or in bad shape, or in an ugly shape of your life. But I'm here to tell you that the moment, because today we have it available. Today you, you and I can choose. We can choose and we can say, you know what, I can change. I want to change my tomorrow. 
I need to change the way that I see my situation. I need to, say, to change the way that I see my financial situation. I need to change the way that I see my business. So I need to change the way I see my children. Oh, you name it, you fill in the blank. But you not only choose it, now you must practice it. Because we need to practice. We need to practice the goodness of God. And I love, be, I love it because we're talking about, about the Holy Spirit. And we talk, we love to talk. I think the church, we are in love with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because we don't have to work for those. He gave it to us. But then what we need to work it is in developing the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of kindness. The fruit of long sufferings. I don't think I like none of the fruits. I mean, to be honest, because I mean, the thought is really nice, like kindness, long suffering. When I, when I hear the word long suffering, I feel like that they're stretching me. Like I cannot do it anymore. But see, God will never ask us to do anything that we're not capable or designed to do. So I believe that what, what's going to take place in this couple of Wednesdays, I believe that there's going to be so much freedom in our minds. I believe that there's going to be so much freedom in how we view life. And, and it's a choice. I said, like, why do I have to choose? I want God to choose for me. Wouldn't it be nice if he chooses for me? But then we, we don't want him to manipulate us, but I want him to choose for me. Lord, choose for me. He says, you know what? I have given you life and death and death and life. I mean, the power of your tongue. Because what? The words come out of your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, we speak. And many times we feel great because we, we like I said, we, we check and we, and we really take care of the outward, our, our behavior. So our behavior is going to be like, okay, I, mean, I need to say it properly. I need to say it well. I need it to be sound good. But inside, I'm a mess. But that's okay because God is not, he's not upset at you. He actually wants you to get rid of the board of directors. I believe we have a board of directors in our head. I started with the DBA, right? You know what DBA? Doing business as? You're like, it's okay. I'm going to start changing my mind and I'm going to renew my mind. And you, you start pretty good. You, you, you know, you, you, I'm going to get rid of this pattern. This is my pattern. I think we need to identify our patterns, our mechanism, what we do, how we respond. And then we start with that. And all of a sudden, I really believe that we have like a board of directors in our head. But this board of directors, they're not good. They're, they're just your own opinion, the opinion that people gave you. Maybe what someone said. Maybe what you experienced. And without knowing, it's not Jesus. It's not the word of God directing our lives, but it's the board of directors. What's the board of directors? Maybe it's your insecurity that leads you. Like you have a new thought in the morning, you said... You, no, today, yes, today we are going to conquer. Today I'm going to go knock on doors. I'm going to get that job that I'm believing for. And then the board directors decide to have a meeting. And the insecurity speaks up for you. Like, you know, you, now, nowadays everybody sends their, you know, their resume over online. But then the other, but God is, the voice is telling you about you knock on doors. If you don't know, you never, just go knock. It, it may be open. It will open if you go knock. And then doubt will come in. It's, excuse me, now it's my, my turn to speak. But what if they don't? How are you going to feel? You already feel crappy. And now if you go and then you, you, you ask, they're going to say, no, don't do it. And then who is it that is calling the shots in your life? Is it, the, is, is, it, is it insecurity? Is it fears? Is it doubt? And without knowing, life passes us by. Without knowing, maybe God has given you a dream, right? Dreams are born in the heart. God has given you a purpose. We all have a purpose. He gives us dream. He gives us passion. He gives us aspiration. He gives us drive. And then he has given us something, but we're still stuck because the other one, the autopilot, still in charge. So why is it that God is telling you today? I believe that God is telling you today that everything is possible with them. The greatest he, he who lives in you than he who lives in the world. 
I believe that he would tell you that I believe in you and I want you to believe that I am able. Okay, fine, you're not able, but I'm able that his grace is sufficient. That his love is sufficient. Maybe you have a board of direction, directors and one of the directors is shame. Well, you know what? It's time to readdress yourself and say, you know what? I'm going to fire every word, everything that has been speaking to me. Whenever I'm trying to go up, the moment I go up, tomorrow I'm down. Yes, you're down because you're still allowing those voices, the lies of the enemy because he's a liar and he's the father of all lies. There's nothing that he's going to tell us that is going to be good. And so that's why we go back to the word of God. And the word of God already told us how to get rid of it. One of the people that you, if you study in the Bible, people had to make choices. I love what Joshua said in Joshua 24, 15. It says, this is Joshua. It started with the thought when he said, you know what? I believe. He believed that God was able to do what he promised he was able to do. But it just happens that he was with a bunch of people that didn't believe like he believed. But this man chose to change his thinking, he didn't even blame. Because I thought if I was Joshua, I would have blamed the rest of the people. I live in misery because of you. I could have conquered, but you didn't let me. He did not. He was a man of integrity. He was a man who stood by his God and believed in his God. And when people, because people were used to, they would look around and they would want that pattern of that, of, of that city. We want to be like them. They have kings. They have that. They wanted to adapt to the, to the world. They wanted the patterns that the world had at that time. But he started with the thought. And his thought changed his life and his descendants. And therefore he was able to enter the promised land when he was 80 years old. But this is what he says. As if it seems evil unto you, Joshua 24, 15. He says, if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. He didn't say, you know what, let God choose for you. He says, no, you get to choose today. Not tomorrow. Today. He says, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And you know that I did the study. As for me, it means within, on the inside, inward. I have already chosen who I am, who my family is going to be. You have a choice. He says, go with that clan or go with the other one. But as for me, I already made up my mind. I'm going to get that living God, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to see my promise. Because just because I see all the defeat around my life and my family. Just because we've seen like we're not moving forward. He says, I am choosing to believe that my family, my children, my legacy, we will serve the Lord. See, that's a different kind of pattern. And I'm going to tell you that it's easy to say, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Because that's when the enemy says, really? You in your house? Okay, let's see tomorrow. Because you get out of church and you got inspired, right? And you're like, I need, it's time for me to serve my God. You know what? I'm going to start today. And you get home and nothing has changed. You get home, you get more bad news. You get home, they even left you a, a voicemail from the doctor. I mean, all these things, you know, and then we allow, then the talk comes. And this one on autopilot says, see, we always say, we always confess the promises of God. But see, it's never going to happen. God is not going to come through for you. And that's when we become valiant in faith and we say, uh-uh, I'm, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to live with we sang it today. We're going to live in the goodness of God. And I'm going to give you my last scripture. I'm going to close with this. Philippians 4, 8, 9. And I'm going to read it from the message. Because I just love the way he says it. It says, summon it all up, friends. I said, you'll do best by filling your minds 
and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best. Fill your mind with the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly. To praise, not things to curse. How many times do we use our mouth to curse? How many times do we curse ourselves? You might not say, but you're cursing yourself. I'm such an idiot. You know, that's a pattern. That needs to be broken. It says, put into practice what you learned from me. What you heard and saw and realized. Do, do that and God who makes everything work together. Will work you into his most excellent harmonies. That means that the moment you and I to choose to, I'm going to change. Many of us here believe that God left us. You're sitting here tonight and you really believe that God doesn't speak to you anymore. That God is not with you anymore. That God abandoned you. That comes from here. Today I am telling you. That the Lord is with you. That he will never leave you. It will never forsake you. Redundantly, he will say it again. I won't leave you and I won't forsake you. He's making his point. And he said, I haven't left you as orphans. I left you my best. While I go to the Father to prepare a mansion for you. He says, I'm leaving you on this earth with the Holy Spirit. And you see... When we allowed the patterns, our thoughts, our negative thoughts, and everything that's painful and, and disappointing. I'm going to tell you that when it comes to this space, when you choose to believe, you're either going to choose to believe that or you're going to choose to believe what God is telling you. Because once it gets into the middle space, that's the kind of life you're going to have. That's the kind of life we're going to have. I'm either going to overcome or be overcome. I'm going to believe God or I'm not going to believe God. The devil has told you, no, you can't change or this situation will never change. It can't change. And because it has become whatever you believe, whatever you give life to becomes your reality. And God wants your reality to be his word. But that takes dedication it takes commitment it takes what you want in it I want I'm gonna will it I'm gonna stop it I'm gonna stop thinking this way I'm gonna renew my mind and don't start with everything because sometimes I want to renew everything start with one thing what is it that's killing you what is it that's robbing you from believing what is it that's robbing your joy and your peace what is it and you identify and you say okay I'm gonna start with that and I'm going to start believing that, yes, I can. I can and I'm able to do all things through Christ Jesus who is my strength. I am an overcomer. Great is he who lives in me than he who lives in the world. I am able. If the world lives by principles of God. You know, I was doing my, and I'm closing with this, but I was, I was looking for quotes, right? And then... Um, and you have Gandhi, you have all these people that lived in such peace. And their faith, their, their quotes is like, a man is who he thinks he is. I'm like, dude, he got it from the Bible. I mean, he got it from the Bible. But you know why he is so, he's so respected? It's because he walked it. It's because he put it into practice. It's because you can see the change in that man. And people say, you know what? I want to be like him. Because I was like, wow, Candy, you didn't come up with that. But good for you. You became famous. We need to make Jesus famous. It's time to make Jesus famous. That someone can say, you know what? I, I know that family. I know how bad they were. I, I know I saw that kid full on drugs I saw the family fully broken I, I saw the business going down or whatever but I saw them I saw them and how they started to change their mind I started how they started to think and and perceive things everything instead of a problem they perceived it as an opportunity 
you and I have an opportunity today to get it right with God. And he says, God, all I need is your agreement. He wants you to partner with him. So I want to pray for you. So I want you to close your eyes. And I believe that God wants to partner with you. I believe that God has not, he never changes. He's unchangeable. His word never fails. It's irrefutable. He's faithful to his word. But many of us are sitting here or in this room and we're so disillusioned. We're so disappointed. Because we haven't seen, because we're still dealing with depression. We're still dealing with all these problems. We're still sick. We still, that this problem hasn't been resolved. Well, I'm here to tell you that God is saying, hey, give me that thought. And put me there and you can say, with my God, all things are possible. With my God, according to his word, all things are going to work out for my good. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. But this is going to work out for my good because he loves me, because he has called me according to his purpose. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.